Hello, I'm Derek Smalls, and you're watching or listening or both to Rock Shop Live with Eric Broadbent. He's the Bent Broad. <laughs> You're watching Rock Shop Live, brought to you by Stuart Travel Guitars. See the incredible stowaway travel guitar at stuartguitars.com. Also brought to you by Idea Bench, makers of hot rod inspired pedal boards and pedal board accessories at ideabench.com. Microphones for Rock Shop Live are brought to you by Rode Microphones. Now, here's your host from Ontario, Canada, guitarist Eric Broadbent. Good evening, everyone, and happy Wednesday evening to you all, and a pre-USA Thanksgiving tomorrow. I hope everyone is doing well. This is kind of a odd time, and not necessarily an odd time for Rock Shop Live, because we're going to be moving Rock Shop, which is normally on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, to this time. And we'll talk about all kinds of different time changes and things of that nature in the program, but uh, we're wishing you well. And, and the majority of our audience here on the channel is American, so we want to wish you an early um, you know, a safe and a very nice Thanksgiving. I know it's going to be a different one for everybody this year. And hopefully, um, you know, I'm not one to preach at all whatsoever, but hopefully you're, you know, social distancing and maybe doing some more Zoom and Skype Thanksgivings as opposed to, you know, having people travel from around the world and that. So, uh, yeah, have a good one. And uh, we had ours in Canada some time ago. It's funny, we always get messages here because a lot of times people just don't realize Sometimes you have friends on Facebook and social media, they don't realize exactly where you live. So it's a, it's funny how many times I've been told, happy Thanksgiving this week already. But you know what? It's nicer to have someone say something like that and then have no one say it, right? Even if you've already celebrated your, your holiday at a different time. Uh, we'll say hi to a bunch of people over in the chat. So what tonight's whole goal is, uh, is um, we're going to take a look at Helix, the 3.0 update. That's the you know biggest update they've done in quite some time. You know, the last several, obviously, versions are kind of what they'd call subversions, 2.2, 2.8, you know, 2.95, all that kind of stuff. This is the next major version. And, you know, they've been talking about this for a long time. When I say they, referring to the staff at Line 6. So we're going to take a look at the website. We're going to go have a look at some of the uh, features. We'll talk about some of them. A lot of you already know a lot about this already. Uh, so if you don't, some may be somewhere in the middle. So we'll try to catch everybody up to speed. But first and foremost, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, we'll say that's cool. We'll go ahead and say hi to a bunch of people right now. How about we do that? We got Matt Krill jumping in. Uh, David Benningfield, my beautiful nocturnal butterfly. She'll be sharing some links throughout the evening. Ed B. Um, let me see here. Um, control gone a little further. We've got Guitarman45 here as well too. And make sure I don't miss any. Ed B, did I say you? Hopefully, uh, hopefully I didn't miss you. Okay, I think I got you. Brad Egan is here as well too. And I'll jump in and say hi to other people as we go throughout the evening as well here too. It's funny, you know, you can never prepare for these things enough. And uh, I'll be talking about several things that we're doing on YouTube throughout the evening. But, you know, I, I was prepared for this for about a week. And then, you know, the last half an hour, or hour before the show here, there's just little technical things are going wrong. You just can never have enough preparation for for live shows. Um, so we'll jump over here in a second. Brian Holbrook is jumping in. It's nice to see you, Brian. Nice to see you. We're talking about some gear on uh, on Facebook a couple days ago. Hope all that stuff is working out for you as well. All right, so what we'll do, Joe is here as well too. Nice to see you. So I probably won't get a chance to say hi to everybody at the moment, but we'll circle back and come back over. So uh, unless you've been living under a rock, 3.0 update is out for Helix. And some people, uh, before I switch over to the website, we'll keep because the camera is really tiny when I go over there. Some people are always afraid to get, you know, new operating systems and new firmware things for their their devices. Uh, you know, perfect example myself. I don't want to upgrade to the newest version of Mac uh, because there's some incompatibilities with certain softwares. So um, I'm not doing that. And some people might say the same same thing about Helix and things like that. Um, I'm going to give you my advice: is go ahead and update to it. I recommend it. Uh, I really do, but there's some steps I would highly encourage you to do first, and that is number one to back up your Helix presets. When I say Helix, when it, your device it, it could be Stomp, could be HXFX, but back up your device, uh, make a factory backup. It's going to prompt you any ways to do that. But you know, yeah, I'm I'm one of these guys who uh, not only do I do the the factory backups when I do the backup, uh, like the upgrade. I make a backup on my set list, and sometimes if I have crucial presets, I'll even export individual presets just just because. Because I have seen things happen over the past. Um, it's no fault of line six or the device. Things can go corrupt, and you know presets work one day and presets don't work the next day. So it's nice to have these in all different locations. And then you know use your own naming and, and file conventions. 
on your computer where you want to store things. But that's that's very, very important. And the next, uh, probably as equal important, is to upgrade your HX Edit software, which you'll be using for Helix or for Stomp or HX Effects. Um, without that, you're not going to see, first of all, you, may, you won't see the new updates. So you might update your firmware on your device, but you're, you are not going to have, the, you're not going to see the updates. And that's the most common thing people say, well, I don't see the new such and such pedal. I don't see this. I don't see the poly this. You haven't updated HX edit. So do that really, really simple. And, um, you know, I'd always advise you to do it, do it when you're kind of not at the end of the day, when you're tired and you might make some mental, uh, you know, mental fit, fatigue mistakes. That's where I tend to try not to do too many things that are uh, brain power uh, re- required. Uh, be fresh, get coffee in the morning and do your updates. You, so you don't you don't miss a step. And we're all bad for that. Sometimes we read our directions. Oh, yeah, I read the thing to a T. And then you realize something went wrong. Well, you know, you missed a step. And I've been that guy as well, too. So just read the instructions. But let's jump over to another screen here for a second. Go over to the web, Line 6 website. Should be jumping over. Okay, there we go. So this is just on this is on their support site here, and I'm not going to read everything a word for word here. Uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about some of the updates, the main the main new features for sure. So we've got a couple new amplifiers, and myself being a high gain uh, an aficionado fan, uh, the new diesel is is fantastic, and it's maybe becoming my favorite amplifier. So we've got the US Princess based on the Fender Princeton Reverb, and the two like the Mega and the lead channels from the VH4 diesel. Um, yeah, and I'm getting a text message from Sandra saying, I never read anything uh, or everything. And it should, it should say, I never read anything. I don't read anything. So we got, we've got the, the two new amplifiers. You might, might as well say three, technically. Uh, and then you've got some new cabs. You've got the 110 US Princess from the Princeton Reverb and um, the 112. And it's funny, you know, a 10-inch speaker is going to give you a nice tight sound. I, I've been a 12-inch uh, speaker guy pretty much my whole life. So I tend to stick on the 12 inch speakers when i'm using the princess i think you'll see some presets of mine tonight i'm pretty sure that's what i'm using in all the uh yeah i'm using the 12 inch speakers on that so this is what something that people really love here is a new effects and i'm not going to go through every single parameter of course um but you know just looking at that little fancy pedal board there's quite a few things here we've got uh, a pedal that uh see i'm not an overdrive guy for the most part i like either amp distortion or i like but uh, helix is making me uh, tend to try a lot of things that I never would have tried in a um, in, in a million years. Now, here's a question already, Brad Egan. Does the update work with native or just the hardware? Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can update native as well too. You go into native, and then there's a gear icon. I believe you check on that, and then go check for updates. Or you just simply go to um, you just go to the software on the website, choose HX native, choose your operating system, or it'll choose for you, and then download that as well too. So same idea. Um, and you can download the update for native. We probably won't be covering native much uh, in tonight's show, but the same principles will work for that. So th- one of my favorite pedals right off the get-go, I'm going to talk about some of my things that are my favorites in the in the uh, new update and things that are maybe not my fa- not so much, maybe things I don't even like. Uh, it's very few and far between, but I mean, you know, I, I don't think we all love the same things. So the Horizon Drive, uh, which is modeled after the Horizon Devices Precision Drive, is now become one of my favorite pedals. A nice drive pedal in front of, uh, it works nice in just about er- anything. Uh, Marshall JCM 900, it works nice in front of the Princess. Uh, so that's a new effect. You've got um, the Swedish Chainsaw. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on the record here to say that's my least favorite, which was modeled after the Boss HM2 Heavy Metal Distortion. The black, uh, the black label Japanese model. You know, we all kind of sought after the black label uh, Boss effects made in Japan. Um, that's my least favorite, and I seem to recall having pretty much all those the metal zones, the DS ones, the OD one. I had the heavy metal pedal, uh, all all of those. In memory, it's in my mind, which is there's not much room left in there, but memory serves me correct that I did like it back then. But I don't like this pedal, so I won't even be demoing that pedal tonight. I don't even think I have it in the list. Of uh, of uh, in, like there's one preset I'm going to show you in a little bit. It's just not for a preset to download. It's just for me to show you all these different things. I didn't even put that one in there, just because I I didn't like it. No disrespect to to the people at Line Six. I just them and that take a great amount of man hours to model these things. I just didn't like it myself. Um, and, and there's three different uh, fuzz uh, pedals in here: the pocket fuzz, the big horn fuzz, and the ballistic fuzz. And again, I'm not a fuzz guy, but thanks to my good friend uh, Chris Robertson from Blackstone Cherry, he turned me on to fuzz pedals. And I at least I at least give them time and I give them some appreciation for what they are now. Without him, I probably never would have tried them. So we're going to go through each of those just real quick, play a couple chords in each of those. And I'm going to show you a little trick that he taught me 
uh, to get, because uh, with Blackstone Cherry, his lead tone is a lot of fuzz and a lot of octave fuzz. So I'm going to show you what I've done with these three different pedals and how you can just sprinkle a little bit of octave sauce. Uh, that's That sounds kind of cool. And really bring them to life. And then I'll do a trick that Chris does uh, that really makes the... Uh, um, the, kind of sizzle, okay? So then we've also got through uh, uh, precision uh, drives, we've got the uh, Horizon Gate, another nice uh, noise gate that can work. I've used that in one of my presets with the uh, the new diesel amplifiers when there's some super high gain. Uh, it's a nice gate without being too um, too tight, if that's the word we're looking for. All right. Uh, let me see here. Everything looking good over here. So, so far, so good. And this is what's a really cool addition here too. You probably can't see my mouse on the screen. Uh, maybe you can. The acoustic simulator uh, from the Boss AC2. I'm sure a lot of you uh, have had that pedal or still do. Uh, I like it a lot. It's actually pretty cool. I'm using it in conjunction with a preamp and one of my presets with some nice spatial reverbs and delays. Uh, that's going to be I, I well appreciated by a lot of people. I think on the Stomp as well, too. We'll have Stomp presets available for that tonight as well, too, featuring that pedal. Um, modulation and poly detune. Um, so we've got a lot of uh, poly effects. That's the biggest thing, the, the polyphonic pitch detunes and things of that nature. So we've got that. We've got the poly sustain, which basically lets you hit a note. And if you use that in conjunction with some nice uh, hang time reverbs and delays, you get almost like an orchestral pad. So, you you know, you uh, hit hit a nice chord, note, note, whatever, and then you step on the uh, on the sustain and hold it, and it'll be almost like an organ-type tone. And uh, you can, you know, kind of solo over that. I'm not going to do any demos over that. There's a million on YouTube already, and I certainly would just be uh, probably doing nothing as good as others that are out there. So we're going to carry on from there. Uh, the glitch delay is something I'm still working on. Uh, you know, there's so many possibilities to it. In a nutshell, what it does is, uh, you know, it's it's a nice delay that will repeat within the times that you set, and then you can actually chop it into different segments, and actually you can give it a randomness when it goes to repeat. Once it goes to repeat that cycle, you can actually do, have it do some weird things. You can have it do some octaves. You can specify the octaves. You can specify um, the how often or how random that, that little parameter that you've just put in there. It's really, really cool. You'll hear that briefly tonight in my acoustic simulator patch because I put it in there in one of the snapshots. I um, I put in a glitch delay just on a little kind of fun thing I did. So a very, very cool. Now, the here's the big things here, the poly, the poly effects. Uh, poly pitch can get gr crazy. I mean, your only limitation is your imagination. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Your limitation and poly, the poly pitch and all the poly effects are kind of your imagination, but more so your DSP. You're going to consume a fair amount of DSP with these effects. They are mono as well. I imagine that even they had to do that to even keep the uh, the DSP power down. Don't quote me on that, but I'm assuming you know uh, with uh, you know being mono, it would probably help the DSP somewhat. But um, just because you have all these blocks available to you doesn't mean you're going to be able to use them once you get into the poly modes. But poly pitch is really cool. There's all kinds of crazy things you can do. For example, I'll show you in a moment, but I can hit a note and I can say how long I want it to ramp up to a certain pitch. And then when I bypass it, how long I want it to come back down to that original pitch. And I've already got some Van Halen eruption ideas in my head for, you know, the tapping part at the end when Eddie hits the open uh, uh, harmonic on the 12th fret. And you can do that, you know, the, like the, uh, the delay that's used for that. Uh, so uh, kinds of crazy ideas there. So you've also got um, poly wham. So you've had... Uh, what is that dedicated, dedicated wham? There we go. I just brought back a memory. Uh, so we've always had the Digitech whammy pedal in there, the equivalent uh, by line six. But now poly, meaning you can polyphonic, you can hit a chord, uh, full chord, you know, whatever you want, and have each one of those notes be transposed accurately as opposed to before when it was, uh, you know, monophonic or where it'd be one string at a time. And sometimes you could cheat and try to simulate maybe a power fifth or something like that. And you might kind of get away with it but now with poly uh wham and pitch and things of that nature you can transpose those whole chords and we'll experiment with that a little bit uh poly capo is exactly just like that it's like putting a capo on your on your guitar and it'll transpose it fully polyphonic and then there's a 12 string mode which is you know you could you just kind of simulating we'd be using some of the same technology uh it's polyphonic across the board and you can simulate a 12 string guitar and you can bring in your balance how much you want, how little you want. And I, I find with, with that one, sometimes less is more. Uh, I think the default is pretty high. Bring it back a little bit, and it gives it a more natural uh, human, uh, human, human feel. Uh, another thing I like a lot is the stereo imager. Stereo imager is something that was um, uh, in, built into PowerCab 212 Plus, 
where you could actually, and it, I didn't even know that when I first got it, it took me probably about a, a month or, well, no, not that long. It took me a while since I had power cap to realize it was there. And, you know, you can, you're, you pretty much have zero to a hundred, right? That's how wide your stereo is. Well, then you realize that there's more than a hundred, uh, more than a hundred percent. You can actually go up to 200% of stereo width. Now, just because you can do that doesn't mean that you should. So experiment with that, but it just, it lets you widen your stereo spectrum. Uh, it's a cool effect as well, too. Uh, it's a nice, and it brings more dimension to your tone. You've got a shuffling looper, which is really, really crazy. Now, I have, I'm not a good looper person. I'm not. I have mad respect for people that are good with loopers. Um, myself, I'm not necessarily one of those people. Uh, but the shuffling looper lets you do all kinds of crazy stuff. And just Google uh, shuffle on YouTube. Just type in Helix shuffling looper, and I guarantee you'll probably find about 20 videos. Uh, check, check them out. And uh, I'm, I'm going to try to stick to what I'm good at. Um, there's some good stuff that's over there. Now, preset spillover, I'm going to show you this briefly. I didn't think I was going to cover that in this demo. I'm going to, I have to physically get out of my chair to do this. This is one thing I really wish there was a feature. I could hit a button in command center on Helix to turn this feature on or off. But back in the day, there was only a couple of good effects units that were out there. We've all probably had them in our, in our racks uh, at one time, whatever. The Digitech GSP uh, 1101, the 2112 and 2120, where they had a true preset spillover and what that means is, okay, like you, before before snapshots came about in Helix, let's say I'm playing a, a heavy metal, dirty uh, preset. I want to jump over to a Roland Jazz Chorus Clean, and it's on preset number two. You're going to have that millisecond, couple millisecond pause in between. To some people, that's no big deal. Other people, it's like they run and they call you a witch and they burn you uh, for having that. So these units back in the day, some of them, or these ones I mentioned a moment ago, were able to do that. And the way they did that is they dedicated one whole entire DSP just for that, that flip over. Okay, now you can do that now in Helix. For most people, uh, I'm going to use myself as an example. I will probably never use the feature because I'm not, I'm not gigging anymore. I will eventually get back to gigging when the world is safe. And I may employ, or I may empl explore this, uh, this feature, but I'll show you how it works tonight. You can literally jump from preset to preset now uh, with zero, um, uh, for for like zero um, latency is what I'm looking for. Zero latency jumping over. It's like, and you can even set your trails on your delay, which I'm going to do. I created two presets to show you tonight. One that has some crazy delay. So when I switch over to the other preset, um, you're going to hear the delay carry over nice and neat and it tucks itself away into the mix. Um, and, uh, and, and it's just beautiful. And I just have to text Sandra back. Just got to see here. Um, She's asking about something on the channel. Okay, so that's that. That's the uh, the preset spillover. Okay, and oh, this is okay. I think probably the the fa my my favorite thing about the update is the term favorites. Just like on your browser on your computer, you know, you bookmark your favorite websites. You know, like youtubecom slash network, That should be in your bookmarks. While favorites, you can favorite your favorite amps, your favorite speakers, your favorite whatever you want, and then you can even go a step further and set them as a user default. So let's say you got a JCM uh, 800, you like your mids dimed like I do all the time. Well, you set that as a favorite and you even set it as a user default. So each time you drop in uh, a, a, a JCM 800, it's gonna have those settings that you chose as a user default. And if you really mess something up and let's say you messed up a factory default and you, you hate it, you can easily revert that back to the factory settings. So very, very cool on that. Uh, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit more. Uh, user model default, yeah, we talked about that. Um, auto impedance, that's kind of nice. It'll measure to see what you're running is for, for guitars. Uh, hotter signals, lower signals, it'll, it'll match that automatically. Um, of course, this is a big thing in the HX Stomp world. Uh, two extra blocks now for our Stomp users. Uh, and again, too, just because the, the, you think you can add two more, once you start getting into the polyphonic and things like that, you're going to find that there are some limitations. But I created a couple presets. I think I've got at least one tonight that took advantage of eight blocks uh, no polyphonic stuff. And it's like, wow, cool. You know, it's it's pretty darn cool to have those extra couple blocks. There's been some times where I'm sure we've all created presets on Stomp. We're like, if I could just have one more, just one one more block or two blocks, and now we got it. The big thing here, again, too, is Command Center and HX Stomp. So there's a lot of things you can do uh, that you just couldn't do before. A command Center was fantastic. And Helix, a godsend to Helix uh, users. 
They've implement, implemented that in Stomp. We've got a tuner now in Native, which I think is kind of cool. Sometimes, sometimes people might use a third-party app in their DAW uh, while they're using Native uh, you know, as their interface, or not as their interface, but as their sound modeling and their recording software. Now you've got uh, built right into Helix, and it's a great tuner. So that argument on a tuner is long over since they brought this tuner out to Helix. Uh, so we've got the gain meter, uh, gain reduction meters in the Helix Native as well. And the last thing I'll touch on here, there's a lot of artist presets um, built into this one as well too. A lot of uh, famous people that you'll recognize here just scrolling through the name. You know, we've got a lot of them from Bumblefoot to Billy Sheehan to Jeff Shorter from Smashing Pumpkins, Jeff Waters from uh, Annihilator, our Canadian, uh, our Canadian thrash artist. And then, okay, there's all your manuals. So I'm going to jump back to the big screen for a quick second. We're going to get into some sounds here. I'm going to keep an eye on the time. We're doing well. 925 here. We're going to try to wrap up for 10 Eastern. So we're doing good. Okay, so we're back over here. And I'm going to just get a guitar signal here. My wireless has probably gone to sleep. So guitar for cho of choice. And I'm going to jump over to a bigger screen here in a moment as well, too. But I'm using uh, the uh, Revstar uh, RS720BX. Love this baby. Doesn't look as white as it is. It's probably looking a little yellow because I've got a... Uh, a tungsten light on me right now, but this thing is just to die for. Locking tuners on the back, so that's going to be. I'm going to be using Rev Stars for the evening. I've got a 620 sitting on the on stand here as well too. So let's do this before I go into full screen for some playing. Let's go over and bring up HX Edit, and I'm going to show you some of those new drive pedals and uh, um, fuzz pedals. Um, once, okay, and let me see here. I'm going to go jump back over to the chat for a second just before I do that because I'm getting some messages. We have new people jumping in. I'm going to go backwards. Um, let me see here. Uh, Music Therapy Laz is here. Matt Krill is saying hi to some folks. Michael Michaels. Um, good. He just ordered a stomp. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, first thing you want to do uh, is look at one of my videos on YouTube here. It'll apply to your stomp. Same thing as Helix. It says, I've got, a, I've got a new Line 6 Helix. What do I do now? It tells you, go. it takes you through all the steps, all that fun stuff, including things that people sometimes over, overlook, war, uh, registering and, and getting a warranty for your product. So register your product and all that good stuff as well, too. Uh, Scott Roos is here. Shashank Vachari is here. Brad Miller, nice to see you, buddy. Uh, let's see if I missed anybody else. Price of Reason is here. Let me see here. Scroll back a little bit more. AZ is here. Paul Sura, there he is. Paul, I got your email. I'm going to reply back to you. I'm glad to that you're doing well. Uh, thank you for giving me an update. I sent Paul an email. I hadn't heard from him in a little bit. I just want to make sure he was okay. And he is. Uh, by the way, Paul is also the voice that you hear at the beginning of the show here. And he's also the voice of our uh, Inside the Gillivers show, which is on uh, Friday nights as well, too. A great radio voice. Uh, Joey, Horizon Drive is incredible. Yes, I agree with you 100%. Gary Davlin. Uh, okay, I think I might have everybody. So I'm going to scroll back down to the bottom. All right. And we're going to jump over now to HX Edits. Let me see if we got that. Okay, so I, 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 you won't see me really here, just other than a little tiny little postage stamp thing on the, on the side here. It's, it's all about the tones tonight. So you just, I've just got a crazy preset here built. I'm using, believe it or not, I'm using the princess again. I really like the princess. <laughs> I love my princess, by the way, too. So uh, I kind of kind of spoiled that because I think I have that on. Yeah, I do. I have the Horizon Drive on right now. So I've got the Horizon Drive plus all the new fuzz pedals um, that are built into the new update. So uh, so here's the Princess right now. Okay. So that Horizon Drive is just to die for. Okay, so I'm going to turn Horizon Drive off now. We're going to go over, I, did I put these on? You know what, I did put them on um, on my, I've got Helix Control underneath the desk, so I will do that. So we're going to start with the Pocket Fuzz. Okay, here's Pocket Fuzz. Now, one of the tricks that Chris uh, Robinson uh, taught me with when it comes to fuzz, and especially Octave Fuzz, now these are not Octave Fuzz pedals, none of them, but we're going to make them octave fuzz. And sometimes if you're a person like me, you're on the fence, you don't like fuzz, but you kind of like it with an octave, uh, like an Octavia or whatever, then we're going to show you a little trick to do that. But what Chris does a lot of times, especially for his leads, he'll play up in the neck position. So we, I'll give you that. I'll give you a chord again. On pocket fuzz. Go up to the neck position. Roll your tone all the way off on the neck position. Okay. Now we can take it a step further. I'm not going to do this with every pedal, but I'm, I'm going to keep pocket fuzz on, and I'm also going to put on the octave 
If I have it, I don't have the octave. Uh, oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, so it's just subtle, okay? So I'm going to put my tone back on full on Pocket Fuzz. We're on the a bridge pickup. Okay, now I'm going to put on the bass octaver. Okay, neck pickup and rolling the tone all the way off. kind of cool okay we're all my tone all the way back we're gonna jump over now to the ballistic fuzz so here's that princess again without ballistic fuzz I'm not a fuzz guy. I'm not a. I'm not a fuzz guy at all. And uh, one second here, I'm just gonna say to Sandra. Uh, nope. Nope. We're good. Nope. She's. Uh, we're gonna be sharing some links right now. She just want to make sure she wasn't supposed to be sharing links for these ones here. These are just the uh, effects that are built in. Kind of cool. All right. That's ballistic fuzz. We're gonna jump over to the uh, uh, the bighorn fuzz. Now this one kind of has. This one kind of has a little bit more my my wheelhouse. Try the octave pedal with that one. Kind of cool. So there's three. There's three of the fuzz pedals. Of course, with the Horizon Drive. I just want to hear the Horizon Drive one more time. The E strings to give me the death of me tonight. Uh, then we jump over to dual pitch. This is a thing I use a lot as well too. You'll see that come on, and that's just going to give you that simulation of a wet, dry, wet. Big difference, right? There's off. Put it back on. All right, so there you go. So that's going to give you an idea of uh, of that. Now, I think what I might do this would be the, probably the perfect time to show you the uh, the the spillover. The true preset spillover. So I, I, I do need to get physically out of my chair here. I sent uh, Eric Klein a message on Facebook yesterday. I wanted to ask, I thought, is there a little hidden thing inside Command Center or something I can push to enable it? Because I'll, ch I'll tell you why. Let's go back here for a sec. My Helix rack, even though I've got my control down here for stepping on it, my Helix uh, rack is... 15, 16 feet back there. So it's I just can't reach back over there and grab it. So I have to get out of my chair to go hit these buttons. Not that I'm lazy. I just didn't want to be rude on camera and have to get out of my seat. So I'm going to uh, just jump over here for a second. And uh, I'm just going to let Sandra know here, my producer. One second here. She's the best. Okay, so I'm going to go back over to the screen here for a second. Let's go back to HX Edit. Which is here. Okay, and these are some noisy presets as well, too. Uh, so I'm going to actually let you hear what they sound like in just a second. But I've got uh, uh, two, two presets. And I think what I'll do is I'll just mute Helix for a second. Just because there's a lot of gain in one of them. One, and I did this on purpose. I wanted to uh, uh, load, load you up with uh, something that's going to have some big spill so you can hear the differences going between preset and preset. So to enable this on your Helix, you can go into global settings and you can turn on um, preset spillover, or you can hold the action and then hit the home button at the same time on Helix, and that'll turn it on or turn it off. And uh, you won't notice anything on the screen here, but on your Helix screen or on your Helix floor or your rack, you'll notice it'll say, uh, it'll it'll prompt you, do you want to do this, whatever, and it'll say if there's, if there's any unsaved changes, it'll be lost. So make sure you save those changes first. And what you're seeing on the screen right now, you're seeing your typical two paths, right? I've got a path on the top, and I don't have anything on the bottom. But if I did, uh, you know, like let's say I put like something like this, like I could put something else in here, like uh, okay, kinky comp, right? 
I'm not using it. I'm not telling it to come down to path B or anything like two to be whatever it's just like but i could eventually have some other presets down there or some blocks i should say and if once i enable this preset spillover it's going to go away so excuse me and unfortunately it's just a small screen here so you're not going to be staring at my butt while i get up out of the chair i'll go over and enable that feature and show you that then we're going to look at some presets that i've made and we'll be calling our night how does that sound i'll be right back just give me a sec Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So you probably notice uh, right on HX Editor, you probably notice that uh, the, the second path disappear, right? So let's unmute Helix. So what this does, this could be this, I'll give you a, a context of how you'd use this. So now you're playing live on stage and you've got like a high gain amplifier and it's, and you, and it's just something you're not going to use snapshots for. You're not using a lot of blocks in this case, like I'm using here, not a ton. And I pretty much max out DSP here as it is anyways, with what you see on screen. And it'll let you go from one preset to a completely new preset with zero latency and still allow spillover. Now, the important thing to note is um, whether you want or do not want to have like effects trails on. So things like delay uh, will have effects trails. Uh, reverb will have trails if you want them, yes or no. By default, they're off. So if you notice, um, I purposely on the delays, I put uh, trails on. You'll see that on just above my head on my screen there. And I've got two delays quite extreme. I've got like one, one delay on the left at 600 milliseconds and one on the right at a, over a second, uh, you know, 1100 milliseconds. All right. And then the second preset is more of a clean one. And uh, so it's got, it's, I'm probably using the princess, am I? Yes, I'm using that princess. I love my princess. And I've got a simple delay with a, a long delay, 2.2 seconds. So I got this. That's well, a little hot. Okay, so let's find out. So, uh, something sounded a little overly hot there. I'm trying to think why that is. Okay. Okay, no, I had the amp on. Okay. Something's goofy on that one. But anyways, well, this will at least give you the idea. So we're going to go back over to um, spill test one. Okay, so now watch this. I'm going to hit a long... Make sure my level's not too hot. Yeah, my level's a little hot. Let's bring that back. I didn't make this preset to be basically, you know, friendly with other presets. This is more for the demo. Okay, so I'm going to hit uh, a couple chords, and I'm going to, uh, I've got to set up a snapshot on uh, my board. Okay, so I should be able to do this here. Whoops, actually not snapshots. I'm sorry, I want to go totally to disregard that completely. I'm not going to be using snapshots. I'm jumping from preset to preset. So I can do it like this here. You'll see them change on the screen. All right, spill test one, spill test two, all right. It takes a second to catch up. All right, so we're just gonna play a little bit here and watch as I change over. You're gonna see no no gap or here, no gap whatsoever. Okay, hear that long delay? I hit a chord again, I'll go back to the dirty. again to the clean. Okay, now the preset sounds horrible, but it gives you the idea, right? And you notice it's it's almost like you got your own the front of house mixing person there. I'll just try even this. I'm gonna do like something like a. Okay, it's a long delay. So watch when I go to the dirty uh, preset. No, 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 pre, no uh, sound is lost. And notice how it just tucks itself nice and neat into the mix into the the other preset. So I'm gonna do that again. Ready? <laughs> I'll try that again with this. I'll try to do that here to the opposite. We go back to clean. Isn't that cool? 
Very, very cool. So that is the, the true uh, preset spillover, whether it's a feature you want to use or not. I like it. I like it uh, uh, tremendously. And yes, uh, R2R3 is jumping in. He says, you, you still hear the trails. Uh, you can turn that off if you want. But I mean, that sounds realistic. You know, it's, I, the, I myself, I have it turned on and I would do that in the live environment as well, too. Coming out of a nice solo, you know, you get the chance to do that, you know. Was <laughs> and then go into your clean part, right? I, I kind of like that. No, this preset wouldn't be a, a very user-friendly preset. It's just insane, but I did that purposely so you could at least uh, hear that, right? So I think that's probably a good example of how that can be used. Um, let me see here. Um, Robert says, plenty I can't do in seriousness, though. I love my Helix. I just can't get it to sound as good as I'm hearing now. Listen, reach out to us uh, anytime you want for any tips. We'll do our very, very best uh, to help you with things like that of that nature. Um, we're happy to help you. I mean, it's, it gets discouraging sometimes. It can be overwhelming, but we're happy to help you out and try to find some tones for you as well, too. It's Once once you lose the intimidation factor of the Helix, uh, you, you, you just start creating like crazy. So I, I, have, I have faith in you can do it, uh, uh, Roberto. All right, so let's jump back over to the big screen here, and I'm going to go back over. And as a matter of fact here, let's let Paul Gilbert... Uh, talk here for a second if i even have it on here and uh that will go back and hit that uh back to uh room i'll disable the true presets spillover could that be louder or softer uh bring up the mids on your chalkboard there a little bit bring up the what on the what i uh, turn up your mids on your chalkboard okay <laughs> there it is what we've got we've got mxr distortion plus which is a fairly i talked about a sharp sound that really helps the if i want something to be easy to pick Mm -hmm. I'll press on that because it just sort of sharpens it up. The, the phase, the phase 90 script with the LED, so I can tell that it's on, uh, even though if we want to get your plugs jammed in my ears. Yeah. And that also helps the sharpness. Uh, the Supro Drive, which is a lot more, you know, big, thick kind of Leslie West, you know, the bassy kind of thing. Um, and then the, um, but the nice thing is if you if you put the MXR into this, you kind of get both. So that, that's, that's the thing is, depending on what order you've got, if you turn both these on, then you kind of got thick and sharp at the same time. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. And uh, th this... Could that be louder or softer? Uh, bring up the mids on your chalkboard there a little bit. Bring up the what on the what? Uh, turn up your mids on your chalkboard. Okay. <laughs> there it is. What we've got, we've got MXR Distortion Plus, which is a fairly, I've talked about a sharp sound. That really helps the... If I want something to be easy to pick... Mm -hmm. I'll press on that because it just sort of sharpens it up. The, the, phase, the phase 90 script with the LED so I can tell that it's on. Uh, you know, if you want to get your plugs jammed in my ears. Yep. And that also helps. Okay, we're back. All right, sorry for the delay there. I grabbed another guitar. We're using the RS620 now. Nice uh, snake eye green. It's hard to see here in the color here. But we're going to jump over now and go through some of the presets that I've created that are available for sale on the website, line6helixpresets.com. One of the other effects that we talked about at the very top of the program was the acoustic simulator modeled after uh, the Boss AC2. A lot of us had that pedal. I know I did. And it was pretty cool. You know, you plug it into a nice clean amplifier and it did its magic, however it was. I don't know how, what the circuitry was, how it did what it did, but it make it sound like a piezo, pezo, however you want to call it, tomato, tomato. And so here's what we got. I had, In this preset, it's I won't show you HX at the moment, but it's a three snapshot preset. And I'm using two different reverbs. And I'm using uh, the AC, the AC2, well, the equivalent to it. Okay, and it gives a nice, beautiful. Kind of nice, All right? So that is uh, the that snapshot is just called normal. I've got bigger. A little bit bigger now. What that is is some pitch detune, giving you a good bit of a simulated wet, dry, wet. Kind of nice. And then we've got the third snapshot in the preset, which is called Hang Time. Very subtle, but we go to a different reverb, and we put in the stereo imaging as well, too, that we talked about earlier, just at about 140%. So there you go. We have that one, uh, we have that one available for both Helix 
Uh, Sandra will give you the link for that one. And if she wants, I, I'm probably confusing her a little bit, but she can share the uh, HX Stomp version as well, too. Obviously, we had to cut back a couple blocks, but you're going to hear the same tone out of HX Stomp. So very, very nice to get an acoustic tone out of an HX Stomp with any guitar of your choice. And I think these are all on sale for right now for, I think, $4.99, I believe. She'll, she'll have uh, the links there, and you can have a look at those. So that is the HX Acoustic uh, the Helix Acoustic 3.0. Next thing we're going to jump over, I'm just going to let her know so she knows. Uh, we're going to look at the Helix Princess. And uh, I'm really liking that amplifier. It's really funny. Um, with with I, I normally would not play that amplifier. I think I did play uh, Prince and Reverb in the studio when we recorded our, uh, our first record. And there's a part where I was in the song Fly, uh, where I do this kind of arpeggiation thing. Love that thing like this. And I think it was a Princeton reverb there. It was kind of cool. So jump over to that one here. Uh, My Princess is also a three snapshot preset. Um, and it's got all kinds of goodies. Uh, for, for Helix, it's got a little bit more than what you would see in uh, Stomp, of course, because we're taking advantage of the blocks. But I've got uh, three snapshots, as I mentioned. I've got some comfort effects, like uh, am I using the precision drive on this one? No, I'm using the Tima. I've got, I've got a phaser in there. I've got a couple different delays. Uh, I'm using my uh, thing I do all the time with my kinky boost in the loop. I've got my pitch to tune and things of that nature. So here's snapshot one, just kind of a rhythm. <laughs> Up, you hear that sponginess of the speaker, and we're using 12 inch speakers in this one. Okay, I'm going to jump over to the lead. Jump back to dirt. Back to rhythm. So you got rhythm, dirt. And you're noticing the pitch to tune in that lead. You can easily take that off. Everything is also put in in, uh, stomp box mode. So you can turn those off at any given time. So let me hit a power, like an an E chord with that pitch to tune on and we'll take it off. And you know what? I totally forgot to show you something else here in a second, too. Um, let me see here. Uh, Brad says, how would that sound using a piezo pickup or would it work at all? Going into um, going into that acoustic simulator would probably sound beautiful. That would probably sound fantastic. And uh, I could have done that tonight with a Variax if I would have thought about that. That's a very good suggestion. That's the only guitars I have here with uh, that uh, system on board. But yeah, that would sound very, very good. When we're done doing these demos, I'm going to come back to one other thing because I forgot to show you a couple of important things in the pitch, pitch, uh, poly, the polyphonic pitch you tune in, in Helix as well too. So I feel horrible I didn't show you that. We're gonna we will come back to it. All right. So next piece that we have, I'll just tell Sandra here so she knows. Um, let me see, Helix on the horizon. Uh, so you can let me see here you can. And stomp. Okay, so this one here is called On the Horizon, and really, I wrote a preset around a pedal. Uh, What it is, is a Horizon Drive running into uh, a Marshall JCM 800. So this is a a kind of a nice nice straight-up rock preset. I'm just going to get some notes here. It's all good. All good. Uh, So let me see what we got here. We have, go back into snapshot mode. We have rhythm, more dirt, and lead. That's rhythm right there. I like that. More dirt. And lead. And you do have a wide pedal on this one as well, too. Even that rhythm. I love it. 
three snapshot. I love that. That's using the precision drive. I mean, basically, it was a preset written around a pedal. I, I'm going to be using that pedal a lot now. And let's jump now over to, um, you know what? I think we got all of our presets. That would be, uh, no, you know what? We almost we got one of our biggest ones. Uh, so that was called On the Horizon. Now we're going to go over to one I love, absolutely love. This one's called Diesel Fuel. Okay, it's a three snapshot preset for both uh, Stomp and Helix. Helix will have more, of course. Uh, so Helix will be using both of the new diesel amplifiers, uh, whereas Stomp will only be using one. So I, in the Helix version, I'm using both the Mega and the Lead, and I believe in the Stomp, uh, it's, I'm just using the Lead one, if I'm, my memory serves me correct. But here's what we got on this preset, and we're going to actually play a song with this one. So this is, just so Sandra knows, this is Helix Diesel. Okay, and we're going to jump over and play a song with this, but before we do that, I'll let you hear it. So we got rhythm on that one. Got dirty. More of a mid-range honk to it. And lead. And I also notice as well, too, if I drop this down to D for a second, I just find that this preset really helps bring out uh, pinch harmonics. And actually, yeah, we'll, we'll play with this song, this one anyways. Now, I want to pop on the, my uh, b bass octave pedal on here. Watch how easy you can get these harmonics out of this thing. Kind of missing them, but play that one in conjunction with a song so i mean if you if you're struggling with some pinch harmonics like i am sometimes this is a good preset to help you uh get some pinch harmonics hopping out so let's keep that wide on and that's that would be the last preset i'm going to demo for the evening other than i won't even be, be, go through the the uh, stomp ones because it's they're exactly the same just a few blocks less uh so, and i'll jump back over to the chat here in a moment as well too so i'll get my laptop unmuted We'll play a song called Runaway and see what we got for a tone here. Okay, I'm probably gonna need a bit more volume on my helix. I have a feeling the laptop's gonna be a little bit louder. Okay. And hopefully everything looks good on the screen. I, I'm getting conflicting reports. YouTube is saying I'm doing well, but my software is saying I've dropped like 2,000 frames. I know I haven't. Um, all right, so we're gonna find that song. It is called uh, Runaway. You know, just having to look off to the side to see our, my kitty is waking. One of two kitties is waking up. Okay. And uh, just wait for a message here from Sandra. Make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat. That's a little hot now.
right, I'll do one more here, tune back up, and we'll uh, jump back over to a quick demo of the polyphonic stuff. And we'll just talk about something. Uh, the Helix Hour is coming back. We'll be talking about that momentarily. <laughs> Here we go. And this will be probably the, one of the last ones here for the evening. Okay, bear with me here. Again, this is using the, it's the same diesel preset as well still. And there we go. All right, that's going to be it for the plan. We're going to jump over in just a second to go over a few last-minute questions in the chat. I'm going to show you a couple of polyphonic stuff that I totally forgot to show you. Uh, and I've got some snapshots available for that as well, too, just to show you how you can change pitch to tune on, on the fly. And maybe we'll do that first. Let's go over and do that. Uh, so no more links for you, Sandra. You're good. Thank you so very, very much. Let's go back over here to... Um, HX edit in just a second. I've lost, just got to reconnect to here. It times out after a while. Okay, so let's go see if we can find that again one more time. One second here. I will put an HX edit on the screen here momentarily as well too. So what was it called? Poly demo. Okay. No, poly, poly. Oh yeah, poly demo and poly snap. Okay. So let's have a look at that. Let's go back over to HX edit. Bear with me. Okay, so we've got HX headed back open here again as well too. So right now, so all the polyphonic things here, you're going to find when you start using polyphonic um, stuff, it's going to eat up a lot of DSP fast. So right now, I've got a poly capo on the guitar, right? So my interval right now is zero. I'm not tuning my guitar or anything, but watch this. I'm just going to change my guitar a little bit. Okay. So there's a half step down. 
you might be hearing my guitar picking up a, a natural tuning through the microphone, hopefully not, because I can throw the tuning for a little kind of crazy. There's a whole step down. Okay, so that is a poly, um, that is a poly capo. I'm just going to show you some of the various functions with the, the, uh, the various pedals, I should say, and then I'm going to show you how I put that into a snapshot, and you can change your tuning just with a snapshot. It's like I do with Variax. Okay, so I'm going to delete that block. All right, and let's go back in here. We're going to go to pitch, and we're going to go to, um, okay, let's get rid of that amplifier as well, too, for a moment. Okay, that amplifier is gone. We're going to go to pitch, and we're going to go poly wham. I, I love that. I just love that name, poly wham. All right, so I'm going to right click on that or control click on that because I'm on a Mac, and I'm going to say bypass the sign. Uh, I'm going to use my pedal. So watch this now, and I'm going to say how far do I want that to go. Let me see here. Let's see if okay, so I'm going to set it. I want the octave to be, I want it to be a, two octaves higher. So right now, it's going to be engaged with my uh, Mission Engineering Expression pedal, so I'm going to head just an A chord and roll it up, ro rock it up. Okay, now I'll just try to see if I can maybe just do a, a funky chord, just so you can kind of hear more uh, individual notes. Every note of the chord is transposed. I know Sandra's ears are going crazy right now. She can't take high frequencies like that. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so that's Poly Wham. I'll delete that one. Let's go back here, pitch again, and uh, Poly Pitch. Okay, this one is quite cool. This is that one I was telling you about before. Uh, so we can say, uh, how high do I want it to go? So I'm gonna, oh, let's, let's put it up maybe to uh, up to 12. And I want, to, I want to take a while to get there. So I want it to take, let's see, let's go crazy, but I want it to take five seconds to get there. And how uh, the return time, how long do I want it to go back to the original note? Let's go crazy with that. I'm just going to do some extremes here. Okay, so I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit uh, like a note, uh, I'll do a, cor a chord. Okay. Okay, now when I turn that off, watch it go back. And I did it wrong. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. What did I do wrong in that one? Okay, so we want interval is 12. We want our shift time. Okay. Oh, I know why. Hang on a second. Tracking, we want that to be there. That's extremely stable. That's fine. There we go. So all kinds of crazy different possibilities. So that your return time is how long it takes to go back. Okay, ramping up. And then turn it, when you disable the pedal. There's all kinds of crazy things you can do in between there as well, too. So that's, uh, I mean, your, your limitations of your imagination. Um, let me see here. Let's get rid of this here. Uh, let's go back here again. So the poly capo, which we just saw a moment ago, I showed you that one. And then we've got the 12 string, which we talked about at the top of the show as well, too. Lead a blend. So that's full blast. I tend to bring the blend back a bit. That's full blast. You don't want to have the full effect. I'm thinking anywhere between like a six and a seven. Six point five. How's that sound? go so that's those features here. I want to make sure we got into that as well too so those are poly now let's go over to one other preset uh, that I used just for demo okay demo purpose all right so now I've got the tuning I'm just gonna play I'm just gonna play a clean a chord and I've got one two three four snapshots on um, on uh, on the control all right in helix and if you look each one if I go to snapshot let's go to tuning okay let's go to pitch so you can see it so you see my my pitch uh, is my interval is zero. Now if I go to snapshot two, you'll see it's down. Where is the pit interval? It's not showing it. Why why is that? Okay, I'm still not on it. All right. Oh, here comes our dogs. <laughs> dogs going crazy here. Dogs are coming through. All right. So instead of talking, I will just show you. Let's go back to snapshot one. 
and I'm going to play a chord. And I'm going to use my feet. Okay, so I'm not changing, and I'm not, I'm not changing my position. I'll even show you here. I'll go back to a big screen just so you can see. Okay, so I'm just hitting an A chord. Half step down, full step down, two steps down. Start with an E chord. Not too bad, right? So question, this is from Waz. How is the acoustic uh, sim compared to a Variax? Close, as close as you're going to get without being a Variax. Uh, I mean, if, if for those of you that don't have a Variax, uh, or they can be, you know, pricier guitars, the acoustic sim will work in a pinch for sure. There goes one of our good. It's like it's like uh, Jumanji in here with the animals here tonight. It's crazy. So that's cool, right? So this, I just save a, save a snapshot with a pitchy tune. That's pretty cool. Of course, you can do that distorted as well too. All right, so. Last thing I want to talk about here, um, I'll make sure I don't miss anything in the chat, but I uh, wanted to make the official announcement tonight. We've been off at the Helix Hour. We are, uh, Season 5 was going to be our last season of, uh, of the Helix Hour. You know, five. I never ever, when I got into doing the show, never thought I'd even make it through one season, let alone two, three, or four. We did five seasons. We had some fantastic guests, uh, and we're, we're back. We've had a lot of people talking about it. Our, our um, Facebook group, All Things Line 6 Helix, um, has been pretty popular, you know, people are getting a lot of members, which is really nice. I mean, it's nothing compared to some of the other groups out there, but it's it's picking up every day. And it showed that there was some interest. I was getting messages on Facebook. I was getting some emails. I was getting Instagram messages and stuff like that. You know, when are you bringing back the Helix Hour? When are you bringing back the Helix Hour? And I was like, it, it's a lot of work that goes into these shows to make them, you know, successful. A lot of work to promote them. Booking the guests is just insane as far as the time time it consumes. And, um, you know, we're starting to have some fun in some other areas. Rock Shop Live was some fun. And my new show I do on Friday is called Inside the Gilliverse. It's more of a TV and entertainment-based uh, show. I'm having a lot of fun with that. And I had to kind of draw the line. But I thought, you know what? Fans are asking for it. Um, the, some of the guests I've had on before immediately jumped at the opportunity when I said, we're going to do it again. Would you like to come back on? Yes. So let's jump over to a screen. We'll give you the official announcement of when that is coming. Uh, it's going to be much sooner than later. It's going to be 2020. There's going to be a time change on it as well, too. So that is, oh, man, I can't even see at the end of it. Here it is right here. So, oh, I need to resize that, too, by the way. Let's fix that. Let's fix that. You get a nice big shot of Billy. <laughs> so you know who that is. Okay, let's fix that. Come on, Eric, get it together here. All right. There we go. All right. So Saturday, December 19th, we're moving from Sundays. Uh, we're moving from Sundays to Saturdays. It's going to kick off officially Saturday, December 19th. Uh, line six and Yamaha artist Billy Sheehan will be here. Billy is one of many people that have the artist presets in the uh, in the new version of the HX uh, Helix Update 3.0. So he's in there. And just to the right of him, which will be the following Saturday, which will be what we call Boxing Day here in Canada, uh, Saturday, December 26th, is Jeff Schroeder. Obviously, uh, you know him probably from the Smashing Pumpkins uh, and Night Dreamer as well, too. Yamaha uh, guitarist artist, Line 6 artist. He's playing the same guitar right there that I have here tonight, the uh, 720 RS720BX. So that being said, let me jump back to the big screen here. So that is your official announcement on that. Go back here. All right, we're back. So Saturday, December 19th, come and join us. Billy Sheehan will be back. Now, the, a few changes to the show. Obviously, the big change is we're moving it from Sundays to Saturday. Same time, different day. Um, you know, doing some research, I think that's the best time for us and our, for our viewers as well, too. And it does work out quite nice for our European and uh, other time zones uh, on the other side of the world. We can pretty much get everybody tuning in where it's not too, too late for, for some people. That works out very, very well. And we're going back to the 60-minute as opposed to 90-minute slot. Uh, we started off the Helix Hour as a 60-minute slot. We bumped it up to 90. We're going back to 60. Um, I've always been a person, when I try to promote my shows and produce my shows with Sandra and Eric Jr., we always want people wanting more as opposed to giving them everything right out of the hop. You know, I mean, we could easily do a three-hour show, and I'm sure some people wouldn't complain, and others would. Uh, and then I've got nothing left to give you the next time. It would give you everything in a 90-minute show or a three-hour show. So we're going to be doing 60-minute shows. 
They're going to be bam, bam, bam. They're going to be so action-packed, I mean, jam-packed full of goodness from the start to the end. Artist presets, all kinds of more tutorials, tips, all that kind of cool stuff. So you can rest assured the Helix Hour is going to be back. We're going to have a full season kicking it off uh, pretty soon with Billy Sheehan, Jeff Schroeder the following week, and then that will be our last one of 2020. We'll get into 2021 and uh, aim for a better year for everything, for all of us. People that aren't working, get back to work safely. People that are gigging, you know, that's, uh, you know, that need to be gigging. That's their work. Hopefully they can get back when time is right. In the meantime, we're going to produce content for you, uh, for all you Helix lovers, for HX Stomp, HX Effects, Pod Go, Native, PowerCap, Variax, Yamaha Guitars, uh, anything and everything in between. Uh, we're not going to leave the bases out. We're going to have lots of bass content, of course, having Billy kicking off the show. So uh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So that being said, we look forward to uh, seeing you there. And for those of you that don't know about our other show that we do, if you're a fan of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, we have a show called Inside the Gilliverse, which is Friday nights, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern as well. Uh, same channel, of course, here. And this weekend we have, this Friday we have, uh, the Mancata brothers who played the Salamanca uh, twins in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. They've already been on before, but they're coming back to answer fan questions. So we're keeping really, really busy here. And if it wasn't for all you guys and girls out there that t- continue to watch the show, give us feedback and things of that nature, uh, you know, it's we, we just couldn't do it. So at this point, I'd like to give a few thanks here. Uh, first of all, thank you all for tuning in and watching this tonight. I hope this 3.0 demo was somewhat fun for you and informative. And maybe I hope you liked it. If you did, consider giving me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you're new here as well too i want to thank our channel moderators mark and leanne of course sandra lee uh if for everything that they all do that uh we we couldn't do without without you our patreon supporters as well too our channel members that's a new feature we've just put on the channel you can join there's a join button down below very very inexpensively and it does help you know it really helps us offset some of the costs we lose in other areas by missing other things to produce these things so the, every little bit helps tremendously we thank you so very much for that and for people that uh, buy our merchandise at broadstash.com, all that cool stuff. Everything you do, including just watching, is really, really appreciated. Uh, if you if you found this extra helpful, share it. If you can, share it on your social platforms. And uh, I'm just going to go by and say hi and bye to a bunch of other people as well, too. Um, Jeff says, uh, okay, your Helix uh, diesel fuel really, really kicks. We'll be using this a lot. Thank you. And I think Jeff is one that purchased. So if I got that from... From Sandra Leeds, that's very, very nice. Uh, Was from Oz, excellent as always. Thanks for the time and effort you put in. You're very welcome, and I thank you. Uh, and Sonia, I miss Sonia. Sonia's our moderator as well, too. I just saw her name. It's hard to remember sometimes. I have a hard time remembering what I did for, for breakfast yesterday. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Brad Egan, Guitar Man, 45. I want to see if I missed anybody else here. Uh, general Consensus, I hope everyone had a good time. Um... Will Starr, nice to see you, buddy. Good stream this this afternoon as well, too. And I think I might have everybody. Harley time. Um, What settings are used to uh, to use the pitch to go from drop D to drop B tuning? That there, I've got, I'll put a, I'll put a free preset up. I'll, I'll link it in the description down there later on. I'll just put a real simple one that you can modify and then you can, you can change that and add any effects. I'll just put the, the pitch detune in there for you. And then, uh, you can download that for Helix and for Stomp. I'll just make it really, it'll be a one block and you can add all the other stuff and you can use that for your tuning for you. I'll do that for you. No, no charge. That's just because it won't be fancy. It's just going to be one block and then you can add all your other stuff on there. Uh, I think I've got everybody. Scott Roos. Nice, nice, nice. All right, everyone, thank you so very much, and we'll look forward to seeing you uh, on Friday night if you want to combine, tune in. And remember, if you haven't uh, updated yet to uh, 3.0, back up everything you've got, get you your latest version of HX edit. Very, very important, or else you won't get to see all this new stuff that we just did tonight. It just won't be sitting there. It'll be on your Helix, but you won't be able to access it. All right, so make sure you do that, at least least through HX edit. All right, everybody, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. And until next time, thank you so very, very much, and cheers. We'll be right back.